Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from exegroautomation.com and welcome to part 7 of our API and database testing with Specflow and C Sharp. And in this part, we'll be talking about database testing for our WCF API. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 6 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. So for that, let's flip to Visual Studio. So in our last video, we wrote the features and we also created a structure or the skeleton for the step definitions. And we also saw how to work with this EA employee test. We are actually working with our EA employee test project, not the one which we discussed in our previous videos, right? So this is the history of what we discussed in our previous video. And in this video, we are really going to implement this step definition. So before starting to write the step definitions, we have to somehow consume the PF service client. This one I already did in our service reference. As you can see here, the PF service client is already available, which means you can straight away use the PF service client like this. Private PF service client client is equal to I'm just going to give null for now. I'm going to consume that service. So for consuming that service or starting to work with that particular client, you need to use this underscore client is equal to new PF service client. So this will implement this particular step definition. And I have connected with this PF service client. And then there is this. Given I insert for Karthik in database, what is this particular step definition? Where is this coming from? Hmm. Seems like this one. It has hard coded the name of this particular step definition like this. We can actually change this as well. You can change like this. Given I insert value in database, which is great. And here, instead of for Karthik, you can change it to a regular expression, something like this. And the parameter you can change from int PO, what is it actually expects? Salary and employee. So salary and the employee name is going to be a string. So I'm going to save this. And if we go to the pffservice.feature, you can see that this particular step definition is implemented right now. So if I just hit F12, this will go here. Great. And now we have to implement this step definition as well. So what is this? Given I insert value into database. So we have to insert a value or the salary into our database so that the value from the web service is going to consume the value from the database and return as the expected value which we have given in our examples table. Great. So we have to insert the value. Since our EA auto framework has already provided a sophisticated infrastructure to consume the database and perform the operation using the database extension helpers, I can easily use that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to call the settings class and this settings class is something which is uh, responsible for all the settings available in our EA auto framework and settings which is available from this EA auto framework.config. I'm going to call that and hit dot. And this is going to bring the different properties which is available in our framework. So the property which I'm interested in is the application connection. And you can see this property is a SQL connection by itself. And this one is going to be responsible for connecting to our applications database, which is nothing but our employees database. Application connection. And then if I hit dot, you can see it brings all the methods available for our database connectivity. But we have already written our extensions, database extensions, which is something used for executing query as well. And you can see this execute query is coming from helpers, which is nothing but this guy, right? So I'm going to call this execute query. And if we open this execute query, it expects us to pass the query string. So the query string which I am interested in is going to be something like this. So string query string is equal to, I'm going to write something like this. Update. So I'm going to update this guy, this table, which is nothing but our employee DB and the table name is employees, right? So update employees 
set the salary right set salary is equal to salary which I'm passing as a parameter and oops where the employee I think it is just name where the name is equal to employee name but actually it's not a good practice you should actually use the employee ID rather the employee name but just for an understanding I'm just giving this for now but this is not the right way try to use the employee ID instead of employee name because the employee ID is something unique and that won't actually duplicate but employee name can be ambiguous so you can have same employee name many number of times in your table right so don't use the employee name rather use the employee ID so this is the query string I'm gonna just pass in right here great so this is going to insert a value or update a value into our database so I think instead of insert I can make maybe I can say I update update which is much meaningful and I update this guy then I check the employee contribution and the employee ID so the employee contribution and employee ID let's see what is the step definition hmm again it's completely meaningless but still we can give something like this so employee contribution and employee ID so what I'm going to do is I am going to use our existing step definitions this time remember in our previous video we were using these guys so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here so instead of the get pf employee contribution so far with this value the employee ID I'm going to use the employee ID which I'm passing in as a parameter this time and R equals so this guy is the expected value so the expected value is going to be employee contribution and the result is going to be this so let this be an integer and this time I don't have employee name rather I have an employee ID so employee ID it is great and I can then change this to employee ID as well great I'm gonna save this and then if I try to execute this hopefully it should work let's see I'm just gonna build the solution yeah the last thing which I actually forgot to do is I need to change the technology because this particular framework is designed to work with web windows service and web services and also you can extend this to uh, a Windows application if you have coded UI so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exchange the technology so in the config you have something called a global config.xml and you can see the technology is web this time so let's change this to web service I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna close it and let's save this as well and if I rebuild the solution now this framework will automatically turn into a web service testing framework and it will start working from there so this is a technology agnostic so you can use any technology in this framework to work with and now you can see here there is our actual test which we are expecting so I'm going to run this selected test and see how it works so this time it should not open the browser rather it should just execute and it should give me a result great and you can see that the test got passed and if I see the output here you can see it is actually performing the operation it is connecting to the web service it is then inserting the value into the database and then it is also verifying if the value is correct or not which is great now if I want to verify with some other value let's say instead of 4000 if I change it to 3500 and what is the employee contribution uh, for this particular employee then we can uh, do it in a different way so let's say if I change this uh, this value of an employee to 3500 and then if I verify what is the particular value of this particular employee then we can calculate that as well so uh, what if we do like this if I go to my uh, Firefox and if I go to the employee details 
you can see for this Ramesh, the employee providential fund is 3,500, which is salary, and his uh, employee contribution it is 2,457, which is great. So what if we take this value, 3,500 and 2,457, uh, as the input value of both of them? But this time it will not work because this guy, the employee Ramesh, has not worked as Karthik has worked. So if you go to his employee list, you can see that Ramesh has worked for only 13 months. So the duration work is less than Karthik. So if I directly use the value 3500 and the output which is generated by Ramesh of the PF contribution, it is not going to be the same. So we can add a little more enhanced uh, test case in the next video of this particular video series because we are going to use store procedure in next video so that I can tell you how to execute a complex query as well using specflow and C sharp along with our database testing. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.